Hello and welcome to FROP Talks, where we discuss anything about modular synthesis with FROP Tools instruments. Today we will see how to create unpredictable behavior with another module, the Usta Sequencer. In the previous videos we have seen how SAPEL generates random values out of white noise. Being this generation a complete analog process, we can talk about true random, because the oscillation of a noise source is completely unpredictable, as will be the values that we sample from it through a sample and hold circuit. However, the USTA sequencer can also generate random values. Is this randomness comparable to SAPEL's one? The short answer is no, the long answer is the very topic of this video. When we sample random values from white noise, we rely on a physical phenomenon, and in the physical world, randomness is a thing. Just think about how clouds move, or how a dice rolls, or how thermal noise fluctuates. All of these random events have a couple of things in common. The values are uncorrelated, and there is no mathematical way of replicating such behaviors. In a digital device that has no access to the physical world, it is thus impossible to achieve true randomness. The set of numbers and operation is limited, and every operation must rely on a form of instruction assigned to the computer. There are, however, some tricks to achieve sequences of random numbers, for example by using operations that calculate any new number based on the previous ones. Every new number will thus be the source for a new operation and we will be left at the very end of this process with a series of numbers that don't have anything in common. However, such random sequences all need to start from a given number, called a seed, and if we repeat the process with the same seed, we will obtain the same sequence every time, and that is not quite random. This is an extreme example, and there are plenty of other operations to achieve more realistic random sequences in the digital domain. However, they are still realistic and not real, so they're often called pseudo-random. And there is a fact that if we observe a digital random generator for long enough, we will see that at a certain point the sequence will start repeating itself. But we don't need to despise the digital randomness, because there are some cases in which a pseudo-random generator can be quite useful, and we will see how with the Usta sequencer. Conceptually, a sequencer is the very opposite of a random voltage generator, because it outputs only those voltages whose values we defined beforehand, and the USTA sequencer by default is no exception. Sometimes, however, it could be nice to depart from our sequence, and that is why we introduce the variation layers on the USTA sequencer. What is the variation? There are two parameters per each stage. The first one defines the probability that our value may change, and the second one defines a range of possible values that may or may not replace it. Such a range is bipolar, meaning that it spans above and below our default value. And these variation parameters are completely independent per each CV and each gate generated by each track. Let's see how it works. This is our sequence, and we are using CVA of trap 1. We are now in the red layer, which is where we write our default values. If we push the channel button a second time, it will become green. This is the variation index, which defines the probability for a stage to change its value from 0 when the LEDs are off to 100% when they are completely on. Let's set the last four stages to 100%. We won't hear any change, and this is because the variation range is still at zero, so let's push the channel button another time. It is now blue, and it defines the pool of values that may replace our default one. As we rotate the encoders, we will increase the range of this pool, both above and below the value we set in the red layer, until we reach the maximum level, which is plus and minus 32 semitones. If our default node is the lowest one, we will hear just the upper new values. If we increase the variation range on a stage whose variation index is zero, we still won't hear any change. We can hear that the sequence is getting really random now, and it is because we are picking every possible semitone. It is not always the case, though, and we will see how to pick just some random notes in a few minutes when we will talk about quantization, so stick around. If we reduce the variation index, we can hear that the notes change just every now and then. And now we will see some examples of other variations. In this patch we are using a sequence to control Brainsaw's wave folder. We are using the CVB of track 1, which by default it is set to output row voltages. We can see that the dashboard doesn't display notes but voltages. 
Let's increase the variation index and range. We now obtain a behavior similar to Sapel's sample and hold. In fact, let's compare them. What we can do with Usta that is not possible with Sapel is sliding between the voltages. Let's push some encoders and turn their stage LED to green. Now the stage will become an ascending or descending ramp. If we set all the stages to green, we will obtain a randomized LFO. We can also randomize our gate value. Let's take the first patch and add an envelope to control the amplitude of each note. We will use gate A to trigger such an envelope. Then, let's bring in some variation index and the range. We can hear that the gates will get randomly longer and shorter. The gate variation range is also bipolar, so if we set the gate length exactly to the middle position, we can hear almost the full range of gate lengths, with some stages tying to the next one. When the gate value becomes zero, the stage will become a musical pause. We can change the stage color also for gates and obtain a ratcheting effect. Now, the variation changes the number of equally spaced gates within each stage, from 0 to 16. 16 gates are quite a lot, and in fast sequences they may be too fast to be audible, so it is often safer to use a narrower variation index. We have just seen that we can randomize both row voltages and pitch values, but what we didn't say is that the operation going on is the same. On the USTA sequencer, the only difference between row voltages and pitch values is quantization. We introduced the concept of quantization in the previous video about Sabel. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link in the description. The concept here is the same. USTA generates voltage values whose degree of precision goes down to the millivolt, and we will call them row voltages. We can also choose, however, to use only those values that correspond to precise musical intervals, and in this case we'll call them pitch voltages. To be completely honest, USTA is a digital device, so even the row voltages are somehow quantized to the millivolt, like we just said, so it is not possible to generate other smaller intervals than the one allowed by the smallest resolution. But for clarity, in this video we will talk about quantization only in relation to pitch voltages. Okay, so I'm editing this video right now and I feel like I need to make a further clarification because we can have a quantization grid smaller than the millivolt on the USTA sequencer, which is when we fine-tune the pitch voltages in semitone cents, which correspond to fractions of millivolt actually. Still, the point is that there is always a limit to the degree of precision that any digital device can have in generating analog signal, which in this case is set by the 16-bit DAC applied to the maximum amplitude range we define. Okay, back to the video. We can choose to run any CV channel in pitch or row mode via menu. What happens when we choose the pitch mode is that USTA applies a quantization mask that filters only the values that suit our musical needs. We define such a quantization mask through two parameters, root and scale. The scale parameter defines the set of intervals that we want to use and the root node defines the starting point that USTA uses to calculate them. The default setting is a C-chromatic, meaning that USTA will output all the 12 semitones of the standard western temperament. In this case, if we change the root node, the result won't change because we are already using all the available values. If we change the scale, we will use less nodes, so we will start filtering those semitones, and in that case, changing the root note will provide a more noticeable result. The variation that we saw in the previous patches always take place before the quantization, just like the values that we entered in the red layer. As a result, the root and scale parameters can dramatically change both our sequence and the outcome of the randomization that we choose to add. Let's go back to the previous patch with pitch variation. Now, let's enter the track menu for the track we are currently using. We must scroll until we find the root and scale menu voices. Let's try to change the scale. So much different now. We can hear that also our default melody changes because some notes that we wrote are no longer in the quantization mask. We can also use microtonal scales where our semitones are no longer 12, but 15, 19, 22, or even 24. 
The concept, however, is still the same. It is possible to add a further degree of unpredictability in a similar fashion to what we did with Sapel when we were changing the N number with quantizer random voltages. Usta allows us to use an external CV to control the variation range through the varishift function. So what happens is that when our external CV is 0 volts, the range of values that may replace our sequence won't change. As the external CV gets progressively higher, the variation range will expand above and below our default nodes. To take advantage of the vary shift, let's go back to our original sequence, set the variation index at maximum and the variation range at zero. If you remember, with these settings we won't be able to hear any change. Then, let's patch the output of a 3 to one to the CVA input and activate its offset. The 3 to one will now output a plain voltage that we can use to modify our variation range. Then, let's enter the track menu for our current track and scroll to the VarishShift menu voice. We'll set its source to CVA, where we just patch our 3 to one voltage offset. We can hear that the higher the voltage, the higher the variation. Now let's open a new track and make a two-stage sequence. Then let's make these two stages really long, like 16 time units each. Let's select CVB and make one stage output 0 volt and the other 10 volts. Then let's make them slide between these two values. We are now left with a triangle LFO synchronized with track 1. Boost allows you to run every track at a different tempo, so we must make sure that both our tracks are running at the same clock. Finally, let's cross-patch the CVB output of this new track to the CVA input. What happens now is a sequence that progressively gets more chaotic before returning to normal. So this was our video about Usta's capability at random voltage generation. Even if it is not true random like Sapel, it still packs some extra features that can even complement Sapel during our musical journey. If we want to draw a comparison between Usta's and Sapel's randomness, we can think about different sculpting techniques. Sapel is like working with marble. We start with a big block of complete random values and we refine them through the quantization circuits and the probability distribution. Usta is more like working with clay. We start with an idea and we keep adding some degrees of randomness until we reach the shape we want. So even if it is not true random, even a pseudo-randomization like the Usta's one have some extra features that can easily complement Sapel's during our musical creative journey. As always, if you have any questions or remarks, let us know in the comments below. We will have more videos on this topic, so if you found this one useful or if you want to know more, consider subscribing to our channel and staying in touch with us through our social media.